Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the VGPS. I'll be coming at you with some Season 15 action for the Cabal Vision Champions Cup playoffs. Where we are going to continue to see the quarterfinals action wrapping up. And, uh, again, I have to just make a quick correction in case you guys had heard it. In my last cast in the Anarian vs. Spartacus game, I did say that the first Rock contestants received 250 euros. That was incorrect. And so, they do not receive 250 euros. Actually, 250 American dollars. There we go. <laughs> but... Now with that correction out the way, let's go ahead and take a look here. Wolf Bainson's Lizardman team is going to be facing off against Elliot's Skaven team. And we're going to see who gets the better of that one as I begin the replay. Boy, Elliot looking so good there. I did opt to pick him because he's taking out some pretty notables. Ed Davo with the Chaos team and then taking out Maduro's Norse team that looked pretty dangerous on paper if you ask me all right let's see if you guys can actually hear the game sound it looks like no you can't hear it so I guess I guess I stopped the cast for nothing guys sorry about that anyways lizard man team coached by wolf Bainson's the Ananta dragons the lizard man team facing off against the Skaven team here of coach Elliot looking pretty strong with the poor man's underworld and although it is the poor man's underworld this is not really an underworld team when you think about it right no warp stone troll, no access, no easy access to mutation. But still, it's going to be one of those things where he may call it the poor man's underworld, but really the underworld team is the poor man's Skaven team. Really, I mean that's that's kind of what that's kind of the way I think of it, to be honest. If push him to sh shove, I suppose. Uh, you know what? I already stopped. Yes, I can't believe that you guys can't hear the game sound. I'm such a noob. Oh well, you know what? I'm not going to stop the cast again. I already did it once. I'm not going to do it again. That's the way I feel about it. Alright, so let's go ahead and just take a quick look at both of the skills here. As I suffer along with these technical difficulties, I might have to just stop it after this game and then just, and then just uh, redo. Alright guys, so now in the Lizard Man corner, we see the Sars with the tackle, Mighty Blow with the piling on, break tackle block, and then the Croxagore, stand firm with the guard ability, with the sidestepping skink right there at the top right, and then a whole bunch of level 1 skinks, why not there, does have this very dangerous skink on the sideline, diving tackle, sure feet, blodge, and the sidestep, and then more Sars here, Pretty much all of them with the block ability. These two here with that guard. And then this level 1 Saurus in the center with the red nose. They may call him Rudolph, but he definitely packs a punch. Squeak sandwich kiosk here to protect against any throw, throw rocks or get the ref. And that would be just nice for the Skaven team because, boy, throw rocks. They are dangerous as well as to get the ref. So it's going to be one of those things in which they definitely want to avoid. But here, the Roja does have the stand firm, the guard, the block, and the claw ability along with the inherent mighty blow. So that is really nice. Not too many times you see Skaven team pick up that Roja. And that's right, guys. I got a little, I got, I, I made some <laughs> poor viewer of mine on YouTube just pulling his hairs out. You're saying it all wrong. I know. I do it on purpose, guys. But it's just going to be one of those things. Alright, so I'm going to say the Roger. Like proper. And then it is going to have this very dangerous mouse up in the front line. As well as the Storm Vermits with the Claw. And the Mighty Blow attack ability. This one here, Mighty Blow without the Claw. But it does have Piling On and the attack ability with that one here. And it does have more line rest. This one, 30 player with that Kick Block ability. And then the Gutter Runners, of course, does have the Wrestle and the Strip Ball for that one. Sidestep and the blodge here to guard and then plus one agility wrestle and the dodge or should I say Raj right there. Hey, 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 am I doing right? Am I doing right? And then the block line right in the backfield and then level one here to come in for the entries and that will do it here for the coverage on the inducements. It appears Wolf Bainson's going to go and choose the extra apothecary sensing that perhaps there's going to be more entries. Normally though, if you are choosing between a Apothecary or two Bloodweiser Babes, then percentage-wise, you probably might want to think about choosing the Bloodweiser Babes instead of the instead of the two 
of pocket carriers, or actually the extra pocket carriers, I should say, and so that you can maybe make use of it with the percentage saying that, oh, you know what, you're probably going to get more KOs with the armor breaks and not necessarily the injuries. But here, the Skaven team opts to go with the extra APO. I can't really blame them for that because this Lizard Man team may be just too much to bear, especially with this tackle and the mighty blow. Piling on Sars in the backfield, ready to punch their faces, though. Luckily, Skaven team is facing up against a, a front line here of the Lizard Man team that doesn't really have much mighty blow whatsoever and maybe it'll just run amok and not only that but it does have the gutter runner with that wrestle and the strip ball ability and as you can see nobody with the sure hands on any of the skinks not a natural thing for the lizard man team to take for their skinks is that sure hands and so that may come into play may come into play let's take away the default skills though before i get yelled at for that <laughs> Uh, that's true about that, Crystal Hunter. Babes do nothing for you after um, after a while, and especially if there's not really that many possession changes. So, yeah, I mean, you can definitely take that into account as well. And you can definitely APO a KO personnel on the pitch and continue to keep them there in the game. So that is definitely something to consider. There are definitely some pros and cons either way, but, you know, I'm just saying just playing the percentages, that's kind of what you want to do. Skaven team, one of my favorite teams, my second favorite team after the Dark Elf team, and, you know, I started out, when I first started playing Blood Bowl, I went and got the Rat Ogre for funsies, and... I didn't really have too much fun with them to be honest because man with the arm value 8 and you put, stick them in the front line it's just a horrible day for you. you sure you may be able to make your one block but then after that they get knocked down and then they ine inevitably get fouled by the other team I mean that's just gonna happen so that's something here that this game team needs to pretty much think about all the time here not only using that Roger to the best of his ability but not only that but just keep him tucked away keep him in a nice safe spot don't allow one of these level 1 skinks to get the boot in and take him out the game prematurely. Skaven team. Look at that tail. He's wagging it like a doggy. He's happy. That's what it is. Well, he'll be a little bit more happier when he breaks armor. He does have that mighty blow and that claw ability as well as that storm vermin right there. We'll be making use of them. Get the armor break. And just get the stun there. But we'll take that for the time being. Oh, I just had that quick hot dog down my lungs. And now I might be hiccuping here. Hopefully not. Oh, no. That'd be terrible for the cast. Ball is just going to be moved here. It looks like Elliot is going to play it. Nice and safe here. Just going to continue to hold the ball for just a little bit. And I kind of like that. I'm not necessarily a big fan of scoring it too quickly. I do do it once in a while just so to keep the opponents guessing. One of the biggest things you could do in Blood Bowl is not, not be too predictable. Because there are coaches out there that does watch what you do and get a sense of your game. And because of that, they're able to expect what you'll do, what you won't do, and what type, like, what type of player that you really are Skaven is just hanging back for the time being lizard man team not going to put the pressure up as of yet waiting until they get to that midfield that's the nice thing here lizard man team really likes to dominate here in the midfield as they should with their SARS and the croc score front line and keep the peace like that but so far Lizard Man team, I think just fearing the claw and mighty blow, just wants to hang back and make it to where the Skiva team won't get so many entries out. But they're <laughs> living up to the adage. When you see a skink and you blitz it, you do it. And there, it's going to be the first of many injuries, I do believe. This is a level one skink, though. Lizard Man team will definitely take that. But one less stupid skink on the pitch. That is definitely going to be a nice day for... 
this game and team. So far, so good. Skinks, though, are definitely going to be something that can come into play a little bit later on. Two strength for the gutter runners, and especially with the skinks matching up with the two strengths. They can get the blitz off. They do have lots of movement outs as well. Not as much as the gutter runners, but still. They kind of match up a little bit well because of it, though. But we'll see if this is a man team can continue to get, keep the skinks onto the pitch. Where Sars may be able to get some hits off with the piling on and the mighty blow. Yes, he's going to be able to get the KO. Nicely done. This is going to be a level 1 line rat, so the Skaven team will continue to say, Okay, fine, you can take him away. Nice bonehead there. It's going to be too bad. That's the danger here. Boneheads, big guy. That's why for me, the Roja, I love him. Sure, he might wild animal if you don't blitz with him or block with him, but still. Keeps his tackle zones. There's the blitz using him to his full effects. Mighty blow in the claw and just going to get a push right there. Not a big deal. And uh, just going to continue to play it nice, strong and solid. No rerolls or anything like that. But I do believe that once the turn starts ticking down, we will see these hits coming out from him. And whether it's push or not, we will likely see the reroll to maybe try to get the defender down defender stumbles on some of these pieces here that are quite dangerous there's gonna be a foul here level one line rat no call from the ref boy this has just been one of those days one of those quarterfinals in which the ref just says play on as all of these fouls are being just just being a no call i think i think in the wood elf game though the first foul done by them was called but and all these the rest of the games here, I haven't really seen any of the calls thus far. One of those things, hey? But the Lizard Man team. The one thing good about the Lizard Man team is they could definitely play some pretty solid blood bowl. It's hard to crack through that defense with the four strength, especially if you don't really have Dauntless or Four strength yourself or anything like that. So Skaven team likely going to have to just back up. I don't know if Elliot's going to be the type to get quick scores here. So it appears that the direction that they're taking, going to get the blitz off here, take down the Tsars. Maybe. <laughs> but he should move the ball back, I think. I don't, I don't see it going any other way at this point. Yeah, Elliot's just not the type to get that quick score here. At least with his Skaven. And, and at least not at this point. This game of teams is going to drop back. Going to keep himself out of danger. Don't want to let the Lizard Man team get too many bashes out. Unfortunately, though, the Lion Rats, they will get bashed up. Going to be pinned with that prehensile tail. Don't want to do these four, four plus dodges if they can help it. And there's going to be the first hit. Going to get the defender down, die. And maybe take down the Lion Rat. Yes. Just going to be a stun right there. When you're playing the Skaven team. I can't tell you when I was playing the Skaven team, I just hoped like crazy. Please, for the love of Nuffle, just get some stuns, not injuries. And oh, there's going to be an injury right there on a very, very good player right there. But with two APOs, going to be able to just spend that one right there. Well, not, not two APOs, but it is going to be Elliot, which is one APO. So he's going to be keeping him on the pitch. Wolf Baneson is the one with the two apothecaries, so a bit of an interesting choice here for the Lizard Man team. Two APOs. I guess suspecting that the Claw and the Mighty Blow will activate a little bit more often than not, and so just kind of guarding against that. Definitely can't blame him there. Wild animal, but boy. What a bad time for it to happen. This is the moment for your Roger to come into action, to come alive, and... Not gonna be the case there. Gonna get one in 36 as well. So, oh boy. And that's the first of the three dodges that was about to be attempted here after the after the push away. 
Well, actually, this gutter runner would dodge away, but this guy already went. So there's going to be some hits on the faces of this Storm Vermin and then this gutter runner. But will any of it come into any real fruition? Yes, going to be a hit there, but nope. No big injuries yet. Going to be okay with this. And uh, going to be pushing back this game in team. So this is the, this is sort of the danger when you are going to be a low armor value team. Such as the Skaven right there. And you move up and then you move back like this. But if the armor value breaks. Or I should say armor breaks. Again, one of those things that one of my viewers is pulling their hairs out about. One of the, if their armor does break, then it's going to be one of those things where... Well, now he's got the ball, but where he's going to go with it? Looks like, though, losing a man team, Wolf Bainsons. Yes, he's be able. He's he's going to be able to put some more pressure here. You're right about that, Chris. The Hunter. Had you been putting some more pressure on the ball carrier, you would have been able to put more. Maybe at least put the blitz on the ball carrier. You're right about that, but. So far, I, don't, I definitely don't blame the play right there. Just going to continue to play it strong and solid. And make it to where the gutter runner won't have too many places to go. And maybe be able to take that ball away. I see there, he does have wrestle. And the, if your ball carrier has wrestle, it's like the opponent has wrestle. Turn 7 now. Turn 8 coming up. So this gutter runner. Just going to have to move up by his lonesome. Does manage to get some gutter runners to help support this. So this is not exactly going potato. But it is a bit of a danger still. This game of team should be able to score it I think though. Barring some type of nuffling there. Does have 3 rerolls. And so can only use 1 reroll but... At least he has held on long and he has held on strong to the rerolls. It appears the Lizard Man team really can't do much. And so it's going to just try to bash down some of these line rats. Maybe get an arm value break or two and then get the skink right on top. Maybe get the blitz out. Yes, he does get the blitz out. And look at that. As I was saying before in the early bits, two strength is such a danger. Especially against these gutter runners. They can get caught up and get the two die blitz. Yes, it is. And he's going to be able to pop that ball out. KO. As well as getting the armor break with the KO. And the ball is going to fly out. Ball is in a okay spot there. But the Lizard Man team is out of range here. All the skinks being used to get that blitz up. So unless Asaurus picks that ball up anytime soon. Then it's going to be a no score either way. I believe. Does have this gutter runner in range. So he may be able to just get this gutter runner up. Make a fly for the ball. And then maybe get the throw here to this other gutter runner. Roja stands straight back up like like a springing snake. Gets the hit. Gets the KO on the arm break. Nice. And will be able to... Ooh, Apu on the KO. I'm a little bit curious about that because this game of team is just going to go for it right there. With the ball pick up after the GFI into the throw, into the 3 plus catch. And with the reroll left, he hasn't used it all half. He's going to use it here. And he will get one and nine right there. Ouch. Just would have been an easy 2 plus dodge away to a 2 plus GFI. And nothing doing right there. Elliot's going to get a little bit nuffled there by the end. Lizard man team. Yes, look at the big smiles on the stars. Or was it due to the armor break here on the KO? Either way, Lizard Man team playing some very good defense. That's the nice thing about playing the Lizard Man team. Just so difficult to get around sometimes. They got good speed here. And the Skinks, especially against those gutter runners, able to shore things up and make things a little bit difficult here. And actually makes it a whole lot more difficult than anything else. And with that... We are likely going into the locker room. Well, we are going to go to the locker room. Zero to zero. As the APO was used on the KO. I suppose that's not such a bad thing. Wants to guarantee him back. Doesn't want to risk it to a 50% roll on the KO. So Wolf Bainsons is going to be using the first APO on him. And then after that, let's just hold it for some important character on the pitch. And it is now zero to zero. Something a bit unheard of if you're playing the Skaven team. 0-0 zero zero in the first half and you had the ball first? What's wrong with you, man? 
Ooh, one gutter runner comes in. There you go. KO's not coming back for the Skaven team. So they're going to have to hold their defense without the help of a couple of their guys there. But I guess they're all just level one line rats. So I guess no worries for wear. But I do believe that he is going to be down in one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Skaven team on defense against the full complement of the Lizardman team. This is something that the Skaven team, well, I mean, I think actually they are they're quite well accustomed to, right? I mean, when you're playing the Skaven team, it's it's natural to be down one, maybe even two, hell, maybe even half your team, but as long as you have these guts to run us, then you'll just be fine. Does have strip ball, like I said, with that wrestle ability. Got to run right here, and that is so dangerous against this team without anyone with that sure hands or anything like that. So this is going to be a this is going to be a little bit of a rough ride, Lizard Man team, just like we've seen against Anarian in Anarian in Spartago's game. He had to worry about that strip ball war dancer, and darn near loses the ball. In fact, he did lose the ball, but just not enough wood elves to capitalize on the pitch. Same thing here. Skaven can definitely try to get that ball out. Even two red die block. Not a big deal. Yeah, you worry about that, Chris the Hunter. I suppose the Skaven team should be happy. They could have been down one to nothing after the big one in 36. But now the Skaven team is just going to have to play some defense down one. Can they hold against the very dangerous front line? The front three needs to hold strong if the Skaven team has any real hope of hoping to keep this defense alive. Does get a couple of stuns there in the front line. Does get the hits. Defender down die. Nicely done. Gets the dangerous Storm Vermin down. And will pilot his on. Yes. And ooh, we'll get the injury. Look at that. So Elliot, already using the apothecary, won't be able to get the storm vermin back, and that's quite a key piece there. Not as key as the other storm vermin with claw and mighty blow, but still, there's one less dangerous piece for Lizardman team to worry about. All according to plan here. Lizardman team could definitely take the time. They do have the slight advantage of the ball, and so he can just try to grind it out and get the victory by the end of regulation here. Poor man's underworld. Needs the Roja come alive here so that he can maybe be able to jump back straight into this game and offer up some type of defense, some type of game here to for this lizard man team to be had, but otherwise this Lizardman team will just grind it out, just cage it up hard, and that's always a sad day in the Skaven book. Oh, here comes a foul coming up. Dirty player, that's why we get it here at the Dirty Rat. You dirty rat. Does that block and kick on him, but I suppose if this works out okay, then glad to be okay with the foul, but just gonna be on the stun on the armor break. That is just too bad. Not necessarily worth it right there, especially at this early of a time period. Lizard Man team is likely just going to hold the ball for the next eight rounds. So, Dirty Rat goes out without really causing too many injuries. Some games, Dirty players come out in spades. Sometimes, they're just spaded. Bonehead. You bonehead, you. You're supposed to be playing Blood Bowl, not just boneheading in the middle of the pitch. Skink. Got the ball. Just gonna hang tight right there, surrounded by his mates. Sensing perhaps some aggression coming out from this game team. He's gonna drop that SARS back. I like that. That's that's called I've been playing against Skaven team long enough to know. So I'm going to keep my 
one of my SARS back here to guard against the aggression that is likely to come out from this game of the scene. Oh, wild animal. Couldn't afford a blitz there, though. One of the reasons why break tackle is something to consider for a roger like that, so that he can always at least get the blitz off. A nice big KO coming out from the Storm Vermin with the claw and Mighty Blow. His brother may be down, but he is still alive. Oh, and there goes the first of many gutter runners running down the pitch. Make use of that boneheaded cross score, dropping his tackle zones around him. Nicely done. Going to continue to base up the SARS as well and play aggressive. As you can see there, with that basing right there, Skaven team is planning on playing aggressive right there. Just just this small little maneuver right there just tells you t tells volumes. Skaven and team are about to get quite aggressive against the ball. There we go. The cage going to come back up. Guard Sars perhaps the lizard man team sensing it and reading it as well. He's just gonna put up a couple of guard stars here in the front line. Make this make this jump in a little bit more difficult for the Skaven team. He's gonna be putting a bit of a pocket here so that the ball when it scatters, it'll maybe be able to come back and be marked up by quite a few tackle zones instead of just one tackle zone. But we'll see how that's gonna play out. Doesn't always work out well. There's the break tackle jumping away. And they're gonna continue to just go down the pitch here. He's like, oh, I'm going away, guys. Good a runner though, jumping away from danger, from the prehensile tail. We'll just continue to mark up that SARS way in the backfield, as if he would catch a touchdown pass or something like that. But there's the blitz here, and really wants to get down the SARS. I guess I can't blame him. That is going to be the tackle and mighty blow with that piling on SARS, but just going to be a push here. I think if you made this many resources against them, boy, you almost consider that reroll. But I can't blame him there. Continue to play solid. No need to use it there. Nothing wasted. Nothing lost. Just going to be a little bit positionally out of whack there, but not a big deal. And there you go. The last dodge away from the prehensile tail. Crocs is going to get himself KO'd. A little bit unfortunate there. And uh, although we did, we did see the signal that he was going to be aggressive, looks like the escape team going to opt to just pull back just gonna rein the horses in. There's the three die blitz coming out from the tackle with Sars. And the mighty blow. Oh no, no big armor break, no problem. Here comes the piling on. With that follow up, but gonna be surviving it both times right there. Oh boy. Gotta run with a plus one agility, living a bit of a charmed life at this point. Surely he should have been just absolutely absolutely mangled after that one, but gonna be all right Skink Holding the ball how much longer can he hold it the wrestle strip ball? Sniffing about waiting for his chance to come in and as you can see there Lizard man team continue to place guards on the corners right there as you can see just such solid good play right there you do not want to afford to let them let the Skaven team have an easy one die blitz. If anything, just force the two red die. Nice blitz. Storm Vermin with the claw. Mighty blow. Oh, continue to not get too much out of him. Been getting a couple of KOs here and there. But really haven't seen much out of him as of yet, nor the Roger. Diving tackle. Ugh. It's one of those things where it just kind of sneaks up on you. Four plus dodge away, no go. As the diving tackle skink continues to just, just play menace to this gutter runner in the backfield. Like, no, you, you may have blitzed in, but that's about it. Good, sir. Sars moving up here. Should be able to once again formulate the cage. Croc score this time's holding it up. So should be able to place the skinks here. 
in position. As the time is ticking down here. Tick, 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 tick. Elliot really needs to start to seriously think about jumping in with this wrestle and the strip ball gutter runner. I mean, this is it. I mean, just a few more turns. You got to do it, my, my boy. You got to do it. Oh, no. And another injury. And this time to the mighty blow and the claw stor storm vermin. That's a big miss, ladies and gentlemen. That is a big miss. Really needed to keep that one alive if the if the Skaven team would have any more chances. Maybe even the overtime. So at this point, overtime period may not even be enough to win the ball game. So Skaven team, they are starting to slide a little bit further and further out of control. And at some point, just going to have to do the... Two red die black. I mean, actually, I do believe that if it jumps in now, it might even be a three red dice. Let's see here now. Actually, no, because he's a two strength ball carry, so he's going to be all right with that. So it's just going to be a two red die black pretty much anywhere he goes, but still. One of those things. Elliot. Got to jump on him soon, but right now it's just trying to take out that dangerous star. It's like, nah, you bastard. You took out my mighty blow with the claw. Storm Vermin, I really want you out of here, but he's going to continue to stay in there. Stubborn. Stars moved in. Whenever you whenever you play with the Crux Gore, with the Prehensile Tail, you, you go in, and if he's free, you just move in, you base him up with the Prehensile Tail, and Especially against the Skaven team here. It's just so susceptible with that arm value 7. You just base him up and you freeze him right in the place. How can they dare think about 4 plus dodge away? You just It's just almost, almost unfathomable. <laughs> 3 die blitz here with the tackle this time. We'll get a nice big hit. Just going to be a stun on the armor break. And uh, piling on. Don't worry, my friends. We got more. Yes, going to get the conversion to the KO on the piling on. Uh, so good here. So good. Armor break. And then got the 7 converted into the 8 with the mighty blow. And that will definitely be good enough here. Roja really needs to get in line here. And so far in the last game that we saw that. Red Ogre play, he was doing fairly well, but this game uh, just just been taken out of the equation almost. Just just haven't been in the game really. And there's a nice injury coming out here. Line rat, he says, I'll take up the mantle. The mighty blow and the piling on is not necessary here when you got the block line rat. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, you're right about that, Wolf Bark. He, Elliot, may have not been as aggressive as he could have been. And he's absolutely getting pinned here by the diving tackle, sidestep skink in the backfield there. Gutter Runner just tied up. And now all you can do is just wait and see here. It's going to have to dive in there, turn 15, but Elliot may have just. May have just missed his chances just outright. Wrestle, strip ball, got KO'd in the last bits. And so with that, I mean, how is he going to come back? How? Perhaps rely on a one-turn touchdown gutter runner? Yeah, that's, that's definitely plausible, I suppose. When you are playing the Skaven team, you need to be pretty good at the one-turners. Plenty of times in which you need to get back into the game. And they are the ones that get you back in there quick and easy. I wouldn't say easy, but at least it's going to be one of those things where you'll be able to have the dodge away. Doesn't want to get surfed out. We'll just continue to stay inbounds against the Red Ogre. I think that was slightly unnecessary, but nonetheless. Maybe just going out of... Whatever's, but it looks like the gunner runner, who may have been the one to perhaps jump in there, is actually 
going the other way. So, Elliot, oh, I suppose he's saying, okay, I'm done. Game over, guys. Or is it? One turn touchdown try? Hmm? But then again, Lizards, they do have guys with side stuff and stand firm. As Wolfbark has pointed out here in chat. So I do believe Skaven chances are out the window and down the hundred flights of stairs. As this is absolutely just gone out in the fizzle. I mean, just I'm just gonna go out without a fight, guys. That's the song I'm gonna do. No cage dives for me. Wow. Four out here on the KOs. That definitely doesn't help out. At this point, all the Skaven team can hope for is a riot, I guess, to get the turn back and get it, try to get a two-turner. It's still possible. Does have a gutter run of five agility, so can kind of throw the ball f fairly far and then does have this gutter run with sidestep, so not an easy thing to take down. Sure, he might be able to get a one three-die block on him or a three-die blitz on him. But then afterwards, they'll be able to just squeeze on out and be just out of danger. Then again, just cover them up with nine Skaven players, I mean, nine Lizard players around them and then be all right. Oh, that is great. That will definitely facilitate some stuff there. But it appears that the sidestep skinks and the guys in the front will pretty much spell out Doom. And uh, I think Elliot just not wanting to play this game here by the end. This does, didn't want to do the cage dives with the wrestle and strip ball and goes out in the fizzle. No bang here, guys. Well, quarterfinals and uh, Wolf Bainson, well, hey, congratulations, moves on to the semifinals. And not only that, to the World Cup 2018 Blood Bowl 2 as they take the game one to nothing and moves past. Wow. Just about everybody liked this game and team. I know, right? I think I think you did, Gary. I was like, no, stop him. Cage dive like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry. I, 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 I casted that game, right? So I know all about it, Gary. <laughs> Next up, though, in the quarterfinals, the last match of the day that I'm going to cast Crucifer taking on Veliopia. And Veliopia, wow, what a team here. Garyon, got, he got past you, and how did he do that? But moreover, how did he get past a very dangerous chaos team in Pupai? Well, he's going to have to go through another dangerous Russian. Crucifer, he's up next, guys. Don't you guys go away. Awesome match, even though it's going to be a chaos dwarf team. This is going to be one for the ages. So don't you guys go away. I'm just going to take a quick sip of my Coke. And be right back. <laughs> 